Hi, I'm Dino Tripodis. Tonight on Whiskey Business, we put the I in dive bar. Rick Gethin from Cat Club Podcast joins me tonight on Whiskey Business. Dino Chipotas, welcome to Whiskey Business, the podcast not so much about whiskey as it is one with whiskey. And whiskey is, is something that we have on each and every podcast. We'll meet our guest bottle here in just a little bit, our 165th bottle on the podcast. <laughs> I don't know when liquor or libations, I'm not a historian, I don't know when the first alcohol was created. But I know that probably soon after that, someone got the idea to build a joint and sell it to people. And that's what we'll be talking about tonight. I'm talking about, go. let's just go back as far as the Old West. Saloons, uh, pubs, taverns, joints, and the iconic dive bar is what we'll be getting into tonight. A long time ago on Whiskey Business, we had a, a conversation about dive bars with a couple of friends of mine. But tonight, Rick Gethin from a Cat Club Podcast, who I had the pleasure of being his guest on his podcast not too long ago, uh, we stumbled across the fact that we are both uh, aficionados, have a strong sense of romance for the dive bars. Because let's be honest, the dive bar people, right? It's all encompassing. It can be whatever you want it to be. Am I right, Rick? Oh, yes, of course. Right? It can be that place where you seek solace uh, for yourself in a glass of whiskey. Maybe there's a bartender across from you who's going to listen to your worries and your woes. Or maybe it's just some nice lady who's just making sure your glass stays full and she knows that you're hurting. And all she's going to do is just keep pouring the comfort, baby. Oh. Uh, we're going to talk about all of that <laughs> tonight. The romance of the dive bar. The literary aspects of the dive bar, what's some of the greatest dive bars, and all of it with Rick Gethin from Cat Club Podcast tonight on Whiskey Business. So thank you for being here. Of course, I can't I can't do this without Hansberry moving the mic back and forth and up and <laughs> just, down. I just want to get the do, most do, perfect possible oh, sound. Uh, uh, okay, thank you. He wanted to make sure I set up the microphone correctly. Okay, I think. all right, fine. And we're, of course, we're I can, now. And, and when I say that, I mean that I can't do the podcast without. The considerable talents of Mr. Greg Hansberry on the audio side, John Whitney on the video side, and Mr. Hansberry. Before we start hey, talking hey. to Mr. Gethin, let's get a little some of the business out of the way, shall have we? Have you subscribed to Whiskey Business I on have not. YouTube? How do you do that? Well, go to your favorite YouTube channel, youtube.com, and uh, type in Whiskey Business with Dino Tripodis. Click on the little subscribe button and the little bell icon to your uh, lower right. And uh, you can get notifications every time uh, Johnny uploads a whiskey business video, whether it's a, an episode or behind the bottle or a goofy uh, social media uh, goofy bit. Whatever we do. Whatever we do. Shtick. 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 Uh, <laughs> gif. Jif. Jif. Uh, they're on there. Uh, so you can, uh, if you're listening on your favorite uh, podcasting app right now, thank you. But we also have a lot of video content, so check that out. Uh, if you are listening on your favorite podcasting app, make sure you subscribe and share with all your buddies. Uh, you know, tell it's. It, I always like to listen when I'm mowing lawn and doing yard work. It's perfect time. Do you? Perfect time. Do you like when you're mowing lawn and yeah. doing yard work? And yeah. Then, and then <laughs> do like, a lot of that, do you? Well, and then I'm like, honey, it's going to be about three more hours. <laughs> and I'm just out in the garage drinking. Uh, but anyway, it's great podcast <laughs> listening time. Uh, so share share whiskey business with all your friends. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Um, I think that's it. Wow, you didn't add a fake one. You've run out. Run out. You? you run out. Of... Run out. And and in a theater near you, because now yeah, now they're doing you, now, now they're doing all... yeah, 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 yeah. In a world. <laughs> and just, just remember, the nine thirty show is completely different than the seven thirty yes, show. Yes, that's yes, right. Yes. That's right. Our guest is Rick Gethin, <laughs> a gentleman uh, who we've been chatting back and forth. He contacted me and uh, generously invited me to be on his podcast a couple weeks ago, uh, the Cat Club podcast. And uh, I graciously accepted. We had a great time. Yes, that we was, did. That was released on Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. 
I, I listened back to it. We both hate the sound of our own voice, so that was hard because <laughs> I hate listening to myself and you hate listening to yourself. And now yeah. the two people that hate listening to themselves are talking to each other once again face to face. And other people are going to listen to yeah. our voices. Let's yeah. say, how do, imagine how we feel, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we both hate your own. Voice. <laughs> that, but, that, that's why there's whiskey in front of all of us. <laughs> But in the course of that conversation, <laughs> we started uh, talking about the, our, our mutual affection for, for dive bars, uh, the essence of a dive bar. Uh, like I said, in an earlier podcast, I think year one of Whiskey Business, we, we got into some dive bar conversations yeah. with a couple of friends of mine. But uh, when Rick and I started talking about it, it started to go a little deeper. And I said, you know what? Hold that thought and come on Whiskey Business so we could talk about it. And I also found out that while we uh, fancy a lot of bourbons and whiskeys on Whiskey Business, we don't have a lot of scotch That's on the correct. show. And then he yeah. told me that he was more of a scotch drinker. <laughs> so I decided in his honor that I would go and get a dive bar scotch Sweet. for the guest bottle. Bottle 165 is Ballantine's Finest Blended Scotch Yay. Whiskey. Uh, you, you, you know, you know, there you go. There you go. And you know what? When I say a dive bar whiskey, don't sell uh, Ballantine's short, my friends. Um, it is and was at one point the best selling Scotch right whiskey. Right here on the label, it says finest. Yeah. It is. So, so it's no, got to it be is. good. It is. It was one of the uh, best selling whiskeys in the, in the world. And I think okay. in, in Europe, in, in, at the height of the 80s, I think it was the best selling Scotch in Europe. And uh, I think it was like third in the United States. At mm. this particular time, and um, and currently, I think it's still like the world's second highest selling Scotch whiskey, as far as people getting an everyday Scotch for themselves. Um, it goes back to 1827 when uh, George Ballantine set up a small little grocery store in Edinburgh and started selling spirits to his uh, customers. And uh, the first dive bar, yeah, uh, well, yeah, pretty much, right? You never yeah. know, you know. Then by 1865, he left the store to his son. And moved to a larger operation in Glasgow uh, to start making more whiskey. Uh, eventually, you know, I think the people that own, oh, and I can't remember the name of the company, the people that own Chevis Regal right mm. now, Pernod or Pernod, sure. I don't know why uh, you're looking at me. That, yeah. that currently own uh, Ballantine. But it's still, it's still, in, and like I said, I had my first sip. And when you're drinking bourbons and, and ryes mm. <laughs> week after week after week after week, or just plain old, you know, Tennessee whiskeys, whatever the case may be. The Scotch whiskey always like smacks you. Oh, that's sure. different. A little that's bit. Different. Right? Sco Scotch whiskey is an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it was something I, I have to credit my grandfather for getting me into drinking Scotch. And it was, yeah, his was, I think, a dive bar Scotch, Cuddy Sark. Cuddy Sark back in the day. Yeah, yeah, definitely one of those cheap pours yeah. and will get you. Then once a year, my father would get him a bottle of Pinch. Nice, but that was just once a year. Mm -hmm. That's like the, the higher class, the lower class uh, yes. bottle. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, Cuddy Sark. That's that's what I cut my teeth on when it came to drinking scotch. So, how old were you? When you got your first taste of scotch. I was twelve, I but keep going. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've got pictures of me, you know, in single digits age, walking around with a bottle of Boone's Farm. So you tell oh, me. Shit. <laughs> Johnny, we're out of grapefruit juice here. Johnny has told one of the greatest stories oh, ever on the podcast about drinking. How much scotch did you drink? I it had to have been like a probably a quarter. Well, probably yeah, probably about a quarter of a bottle. A quarter of a bottle. <laughs> yeah, and then and then getting on my bike and deciding <laughs> that I'm going to go up to Baskin Robbins and get the Matterhorn. Bike Which as in bicycle or bicycle? bicycle. Okay. Bicycle. He's twelve. Yes, he's twelve. Oh, okay. And I, I, I saunter into uh, to uh, to the ice cream shop to get a, a fourteen scoop Sunday. The Matterhorn. <laughs> the Matterhorn. The Matterhorn. I did not make it home without puking up the uh, Matterhorn. Matterhorn. Scotch and ice cream. Uh, That's just wow. Yeah. I didn't drink actually for another probably eight years. Good or, good. Well, yeah. probably eighteen. Probably. The, the, there's the. What there what, endeth the lesson. Yeah, what, 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 what was it? Tw Twelve. Uh, you just a bottle laying around and, and yeah. Got well, into well it? my mom was a Scotch drinker, so we uh, so I I know I was like I'm gonna try that. She seems to have a good time with that stuff, and that was a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. She seems so much happier with yeah. after she drinks it. Yeah. Look at that. He uh, Rick uh, really does have a picture. You do have a picture. Can oh my god. Up to the camera and actually see it at all. How do we know that's you? 
<laughs> How do we know that's not Photoshop? That was that was taken, uh, and I can't remember the year. It was in the seventies, um, but that was at the <coughs> Watkins Glen racetrack for U.S. Grand Prix Formula One weekend. So, I'm I'm a dark state picture. Review. Child services would be all over your oh, family yeah. now. I learned how to drive a vehicle. Um, three on the tree pickup truck. Loaded with my father and all of his friends who were drunk off their ass. At the Watkins Glen U.S. Grand Prix at the Watkins Glen Racetrack in 1977. Wow. How old were you there? Like 10? 10. 10 years oh, old. Shit. <laughs> when, <laughs> when the 10-year-old Rick's the most responsible one in the in the truck. Pretty much. You know? <laughs> Pretty much. They threw me the keys and said, okay, you're driving. I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Just watched the race, uh, race yeah. too, Adam so Hall. that can't be good. And I'm also going to uh, apologize to Hansberry and Whitney. You guys are going to get smoked out tonight. Bring it. <laughs> we're both smokers, and it's, it's seldom that I get another Man. cigarette smoker wow. on the podcast. And the subject being dive bars. And we're drinking scotch Ooh. whiskey. So, you know. I need a cigar. That's what I need. It's when a, in <laughs> Rome, you don't smoke a cigar. Well, you, you can. I guess it would be like an El Producto. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a fancy cigar. No. Not in one of these fancy schmancy cigar lounges that are yeah. popping up everywhere. And, but exactly. I do have some fine cigars. I do have a, a nice humidor with good cigars. But that's for the good whiskey, though. The, yeah, yeah. Hey, there's nothing. There's there, there's a good cigar and a, and a good whiskey <laughs> go hand in hand. But tonight, my friend, we talk about the dive bar itself. What was the first dive bar, or was the first bar you went into? As as a legitimate drinker, as a, as an as an of age drinker. Oh, actually, of age. <laughs> of age. Was it a dive bar? Um, was it in your hometown? No, because no, it was uh, <coughs> just I was in the army. In the so, army. So I was already drinking before twenty one. Because mm-hmm. um, they had just changed the drinking age to twenty one. I want to say in the early eighties in New York, maybe. Is that where you're from? Yeah. From I'm actually from my mother, but, you know. Dad jokes. Where in New York? <laughs> um, I was born in the Finger Lakes region. Oh, I bet. Southern, southern end of the Finger Lakes. Okay. So, um, but spent my formative years, my teenage years, in New York City. So, it was, uh, so you were drinking at an early age. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I, was, I was going into bars way before I was legal. Mm-hmm. But Likewise. back then, it wasn't, I guess, as big of a deal. Mm-hmm. As long as you conducted yourself, you know, right? Don't get sloppy drunk. And All we had to do was make sure we had a fake ID that looked like we were 18 because I lived in Steubenville, Ohio, and right across the river was West Virginia, and West Virginia was 18 and above, could drink. So if we had fake IDs that looked like, you know, we were 18, we were good to go. So we started on a, on a path <laughs> as well at an early age. But do you remember the first real dive bar you were in? Yes, I do. Um, it was a little little bar called the Village Inn in Corning, New York, and it was—I mean, a hole in the wall. It's still there. It's been there forever, um, but it's dark, dingy, just one of those. Almost like when you walk in, you expect to see sawdust on the floor mm-hmm. type of place, but there isn't any, um, and not a lot of fights. But it's just—it has that dark, dingy atmosphere. Um, that I always associated with true dive bars um, that way. Yeah, light and bright no. doesn't doesn't fall like into the neon, description. Of neon a dive. lights, no. Only the neon lights, maybe <laughs> for particular products. Say like uh, there might be a neon Miller. Oh highlight. yeah, like like those old, old those, style, you know, yeah. you know, or something something that came from the distributor that was advertising a certain product. But you know, neon. Yeah. For the sake of, of neon lights, no, no. Anything that maybe added a little color and a little character to the joint, that was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Those, exactly. those type of signs. I have a Miller High Life sign downstairs in the poker room. Yeah. That's authentic and it's pretty cool. Nice. And uh, yeah, yeah. We'll have to get you all back over to our, uh, to our house and, you know, I've got a bar down in my basement. Not as extensive as yours, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, we do it full, full bar. And there's one downstairs, downstairs too. <laughs> there's one outside. Okay. And there's one out in the back. I have well. now died and gone to heaven. <laughs> there's also there's also a backyard bar outside as well. Holy now, the, shit! The backyard okay. bar isn't stocked, but there's two refrigerators back there. With you want to call beer. my wife and tell her I'm just not yeah, coming home right, 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 ever again? 
Yeah. I'll yeah. see you tomorrow, honey, because, yeah. Um, I, I just always had a hard, fast rule that if I wanted a drink, I didn't want to have to go too far for it. <laughs> Wherever I was at, I wanted something. You didn't have to go up or downstairs yeah, or yeah, out, yeah. In, out well, of nowhere. Well, no, once you've had a few, then, you know, your equilibrium, you want to keep that. That's right. That's true. Yeah. You know, that pace. <laughs> It's the altitude changes going right. up and down if steps that'll go screw you up, man. Beer. So what is it about a dive bar? I would rather be, you know, nine times out of ten, I would rather be in a in a, in a dive bar. What 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 to you is the the essence and description of a dive bar? What do you look for? What do you what what constitutes a dive bar in your opinion? Because everybody always mm. says that they you know, they have to be like this ramshackle mess of a place. No, no, no not at all. No. Not at all. Uh, to me, I think a, a dive bar is, I mean, it's a place where locals go. And you're gonna, you're always going to go in and see the guys, the old guys. I'm talking like way past retirement age, sitting at the end of the bar with the whiskey face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because they don't do mixed drinks. Right, <laughs> no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, it's, it's an it's, old-fashioned. Shots, yeah. shots are straight up and, you know, <laughs> right. they've got the whiskey face. And, and what is the whiskey face? You know, you toss it down. It's like, <laughs> they look like this for the rest of their life. Right, 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 right. You know, Red yeah. face. Yeah. And then they get real you happy. Know. Got that from Dennis Leary. Oh. <laughs> but uh, but it's so true. And, and if I go in, if I walk into a bar I've never been into that has that there, I know I'm in a place that I'm going to love. Mm-hmm. And I've never had that feeling. Yeah. If I see an old guy at the, at the bar that has a whiskey face and he's just kind of sitting there doing his thing. I'm home. You're good. I'm home. Wood bar? Uh, preferably. Preferably, right? Yeah. Stools? Backs or no backs? Uh, backs. Backs? Because yeah. old, old school style right? stools with, right. the, with the backs with on With the back on it. Kind of like the 50s, and, 60s. And why? Because you might be there a while. And you need a little support. Right. Oh, you yeah. need to lean back. And when you lean back, you don't want to fall <laughs> off. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Been there, done that, yeah, have the right? t-shirt, you know. Yep, yep. It yep. needs OSHA kind of standards. The, 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 the. OSHA, what the hell is OSHA? <laughs> OSHA. Come on. Well, you know, see. Oh, sure. Let's have another one OSHA. is what, what that stands for. And then I always, I sometimes, you know, and it's it's so hard to find them now with technology, but every once in a while I'll come into a, uh, I'll find a dive bar that actually still has an old jukebox. Oh, mm. God, yes. And, 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 and the songs that are on there, you know, aren't, they're they're the they're the songs that were on that jukebox when they 40 got years that, ago, when yeah. they got mm-hmm. that jukebox. But it's like, man, that is a step in time, back in time that I just, just relish and, and and it takes whatever it takes. And like, how do they even find anybody to service this anymore? Yeah, right? how do you, oh, what, what are the top three? What are the top three dive bar songs on the jukebox? Oh, oh, right? that's, <laughs> a great, that's a great. Conversation. You walk in and see a jukebox that has that that hasn't been updated in forever. Doesn't have the current. Hot hits the touch, or whatever. Touch tunes. Yeah, that yeah, kind of crap. Exactly. Um, you know, push buttons that actually make a sound when you push it in. Um, if you walk in and see something like that, you know you're in a true dive bar. Dive bar. That's my, uh, like, growing up, uh, when I grow up, I want to have a uh, jukebox in my, in my <laughs> when basement. When you grow when up? When I grow up. Yeah, you know. <laughs> like, when you grow wait a minute, we're supposed to grow up? Well, what the hell? Right. Oh. Basically, when I get old enough to justify paying it, and my wife not killing me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got a guy for you. Yeah. You're looking for a jukebox. Yeah, I you got a guy. I always got a guy. Got a guy. Always you got got you a better guy. take out a second mortgage for that right. Wurlitzer that right. you're yeah, going to yeah, get. Yeah, yeah. The, bu- the bubbler. You got to get the bubbler if you're going to get like 45, one. I actually, you know. I actually can get my hands on a jukebox. It's in my uncle's house in Steubenville as we speak. Yeah. There's a jukebox there that he wants me to bring up here. To Columbus for my house. I got nowhere to put it. What the fuck are we doing here? Yeah, Let's I, got, go. I got plenty of room in my place. Road trip. Road trip. <laughs> got plenty of plenty right. of room in my place and enough friends that have a van. You know. All right, we'll uh, get we'll, in the we'll, van. We'll, Don't ask any we'll questions. Back you know. On that because, uh, <laughs> I, I like your question though, Johnny. What's a good jukebox song? And it's got to kind of fit the time. You know, if I can find some good '60s rock and roll. Well, uh, that's the thing is that 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 was kind of leads into my next question. When you go into a dive bar, sometimes you're going in there with buddies and you're going for a good time. But sometimes you go into a dive bar because you just want what I mentioned earlier. You want that alone, you aloneness. You want that solace. You just want that peace to sit and contemplate and think. At least, sure. And maybe I'm putting a little bit more romance and, and and literary thought into it. But there's been many a time over the course of a year where I've gone into a, a dive bar. Uh, there's a couple of local dives around here. 
there was one bar that I used to tell nobody about. Just so you could go. Just so I could go and I know I'd be alone. And I mistakenly <laughs> told them where I was at one time and they came there and they they loved it. And now, now I'm searching for another hole in the wall that I can call just my own that nobody knows about. <laughs> That's Rafters over here on Indianola. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, Rafters. Yeah, Rafters on Indianola. That was my go-to place. Yeah, you it, told it. You, you, I think you brought that up in the... Uh, the uh, uh, last uh, dive bar uh, conversation, conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like nobody knew I would go to rafters and I could hide there and I could go. And that's where I would go when I'd be uh, sad or depressed or contemplative. And I could go there and sit. The beer was cheap. The shots were, were full. They weren't on a they weren't on a, a measured pour, yeah. you know, or anything like that. They just poured them out. And, yeah. And, well, hand pour. I mean, and yeah, if, hand pour. If they've got a heavy pour. That's yeah, it's my kind of it's, bar. And, and uh, dive bars can't be chains, you know. I, no. I think that yeah. I think that right away. Just you know, if you've got an investor, no, it's a mom and pop place, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And some place that's been there and has a history, right? Right. Good or bad, it's got a history. Yeah. You know. So that you know, so like if I if I wanted to open up a bar right now, I would want to open up a dive bar. But you know, once again, it needs a history. Does it have it? You know, if I open up a dive bar, I think I I live here in Clintonville. And Clintonville, I'm sorry, but you don't have a uh, what I consider to be a, a dive bar in my neighborhood that I could go to. People would probably pitch a fit because now Clintonville is, you saw all the trendy places that yeah. are across the street from me yeah. now. And you open up one, Dino, you better hire me because I want to be in there to tell all the hipsters that come in. Mm-hmm. Get the fuck out. Well, and that's what I was going to bring into the conversation, <laughs> no too. Hipsters. Yeah, no hipsters. No hipsters allowed. <laughs> you, Everything's becoming hip again, or you know, like that that retro vibe, and uh, you know, kind of like the whole whiskey thing we've talked about on this right, podcast. Right, right, so, right. You know, craft craft cocktails and all that stuff. So yeah, it's like, uh, it, it's that weird thing. Like you want to you want to have a place that's welcoming, but at the same time, like you don't want a bunch of jackasses oh, and chachis in there either. Like it, it's it's yeah. a weird uh, it's a weird dichotomy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I, I mean, you gotta remember, I'm from New York. Yeah, right? and and. It's in our DNA when we're born. We're assholes. So we have no fucks to give. <laughs> so, and I'll use, I have a great example for you. Uh, first year of, of the website, musicinmotioncolumbus.com, um, which the Cat Club podcast is, is part of. First year of the website, 2017, I was at Ace of Cups on North High mm-hmm. um, for a show. A couple of college and I want to call them frat boys. They just had sure. that appearance about them. Um, came in and they were standing next to me at the bar. And I was sitting there drinking PBR pounders. Mm-hmm. Not because they're good, but because they're freaking cheap. Yeah. <laughs> and cold. And cold. And these guys did the talk loudly, not at me, but so that I could hear it. Well, look at the old guy trying to be a hip. Because you were drinking a PBR? Because I was drinking a PBR. And, and, yeah. and PBR had become the trendy, yeah, the, the yeah. trendy hip blue, beer. So I, I just, you know, immediately stuck my head right in the circle of four or five guys there and said, I was drinking PBR before you were even a wet stain in your yeah. daddy's underwear. <laughs> <laughs> that no, shot him right up. There, there's so. that problem. There's, you know, I collect vinyl, uh, and that's that's a huge thing now, too. All these, you know... These kids are are getting uh, you know One Direction vinyl and and uh, whoa, t- Taylor whoa, Swift whoa, you know One Direction put out vinyl yeah and, and then you know they could buy it Holy at Walmart shit. and dogs uh, and cats living together exactly. I mean what is this it? it's a classy band so, I don't know what you but yeah. that's the thing it's like you want you want your culture to be uh, and I peg you for an insane guy <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> No, you want your culture to be appreciated, but you draw that line at like, yeah, but no douchebags or no, you know, no tweens. Uh, you know, like the same thing with you, Dino. Like you had your bar, but you, you, you know, like the more people you tell, yeah, the less yeah. kind of personal it becomes. And right. but the I thing is, if 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 you had your own bar, right, and basically you took after me and became an asshole and told the hipsters to get out, it would become the place to go, right? Because you want to be there, right? Right. Yeah. It just can't get there. This weird twisted thought process these younger kids have. Right. And I don't get it at all. Yeah. You know. I mean, I, I, maybe I'm a hypocrite in, in some ways because there's a lot of uh, of hip private places now here in Columbus as well where you have to be a member yeah. to be part of this, uh, you know, 
Aren't those called Swinger's Clubs? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're actually I could bur- be wrong. They're actually bourbon whiskey whiskey joints where you have to have uh, have a membership and you and you pay. And when you go to the bar, you you don't pay. They just run right. a tab on you and you pay it at the end of the month. And, but it's an exclusive membership, and there's like a waiting list this long. Like, did you sign up to to join so and so? I said no, no, I'm not getting right. on a list right. to be on a. a, a, a Right. No. No. You, you no. should get on that list and then go and then just not show up. You've got the just most. Just so ex- you take the place of somebody else. Some you have the that. most exclusive <laughs> whiskey club here in Columbus, especially yeah, during yeah, like with that. whiskey business, especially during the pandemic, <laughs> <laughs> when everything got locked down and shut down, and we had a very small bubble right. of people uh, that were you know that that would come over here. I mean, yeah, when everything was shut down, when the bars were closed. This was the dive bar to come to, you know, if, if, if you were honoring the protocols and everybody sure. was doing the right thing and safe distancing and so forth and so on, we, we did all that stuff, but, but yeah, um, yeah, the, there's, there's plenty of, uh, I was, I was ready. For, I, I didn't get all this whiskey for a pandemic, <laughs> but it turns out it came in handy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we're out of milk, but hey, open up that bottle of Jack. Yeah, there you, you know. go. Frosted Flakes and Old Pug. <laughs> there's, there's more. Uh, there's Glenn more Fittich and, uh, and, you know, yeah. Fruit Loops. Yeah, it works. Yeah. So, do you like to go to dive bars by yourself or do you like to go with friends? I, you know, I've never actually thought about it that way. But now that you've asked, um, I've probably been to dive bars alone 80% of the time I've been in one. Why? I prefer it that way, because what's your what's what's your mindset when you go in? You just want to drink. I I want to have I want to drink. I want to hear good music, mm-hmm. which good dive bar always has good music, and nobody bothers you. You know, the bartenders and the wait step they don't bother you. If your glass is empty, they'll refill it. Right. Um, people you, don't come in and, and knock into you or whatever. It's not a crowded place. It's right. just. It's a place to kind of gather my thoughts and clear my mind. And do you always sit at the bar? Yeah. Yeah. If I'm there alone, yeah. Yeah. If there's tables, you won't grab a table and sit somewhere in the corner by yourself in the dark. No, because then I would look like a creeper. Yeah. And, you know, and I you have that. He draws the line point. You don't think you'd look like a, a, a lonely creeper sitting at the bar by yourself? No, I'd just look sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, uh, you know, but there's but there's some truth to that. Yeah. But no, it, it, it's really one of those things where a, a dive bar is, to me, it's always been an experience um, going into one. And, and I prefer to do that alone or with just one or two people mm-hmm. that are kind of with the same mindset, you know, not there to necessarily have a good time. That's not why I go to a dive bar. Interesting. Yeah, I agree. You go to Roosters to watch the game with your buddies. You don't yeah. go to a dive bar with eight buddies who want, you know, catch Yeah, you go there to relax yeah. and just <clears throat> unload a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a place where I don't have to, I don't have to be me. Yeah. You know, I don't have to put on, you know, a professional side or whatever else. I can just be me and sit at the bar and not be asked a lot of questions. Okay, it's a little contradictory. I'm going to call you out on that. It's sure. a place where I go to where I don't have to be me, but then at the same time you say I can be me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I don't have to be the professional me. You don't have to be on the, as you don't yeah, have to, the public me. The public you. Yes. Right. You could just be yourself. Yes. Which is why I enjoyed oh this this is perfect. This is a perfect place for me to hide. Right. You know? Uh even at even even at the at the height of radio success, mm-hmm. I could go there and Nobody, nobody knew that. No yeah. soccer. Moms well, it wasn't like either. Cheers. They didn't know <laughs> yeah, your name. Yeah, yeah. Man. There was no, there was no, <laughs> yeah. there was no. You know, you're Dean from Seventy Ninety Five. Mm-hmm. Like, nope, nope. <laughs> cool. Some other guy. Uh, nope. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. That station blows. You sir are a bag of douche. Uh, but, um, but at the same time, I have gone into them. Like, I have friends who have the same appreciation for a dive bar, so I have right. gone in with friends. Mm-hmm. And we go there because uh, there are certain things that the beer is cold. Always. The shots are generous. Mm -hmm. The prices are right. The music is good. And in that respect, yeah. Then all of a sudden, and and it's it's almost like I, I almost look for an extension of my home. 
when I when I if I, if I find a place like that. Sure, sure. You know, because through the years, oh my dear lord, and and it's something you know my my father uh, never imparted a lot of things with me, but one thing that did stick with me, and when he did come to visit. After we'd been estranged for a bunch of years, he came uh, and, and stayed with me for a couple of days, and it was on a poker night, and, and he was just, he was beside himself with joy because upstairs there were people uh, playing cards, and, and you know, the girls would be upstairs, the girlfriends would be upstairs drinking and watching TV and, and, and playing euchre, and the guys were downstairs drinking and playing poker, and my father was just observing all of this, and, and he was just like thrilled that I was a good host. Mm -hmm. And when I go to a dive bar with my friends and there is a nice bartender mm -hmm. and, 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 and everything, all those elements that I just mentioned are present, right. you know, making the place, they're a good host. I, I like that. But, you know, there's, there's Dark Dino too that, that, <laughs> that wants to just go in, like you said, by myself. Yep. A lot of my brain I don't know what it is. I could do the same thing here in my house. I could pour a whiskey and think and contemplate, but for some reason, stepping out and going to a, a different venue in a different spot in a different place puts you in a different mindset. I don't know why that is. I can't explain it. Well, to me, it's always been, and some people would say this is blasphemous to say this, but to me, it's like going to church. I don't go I don't to... Consider, I don't consider that blasphemous. I don't go to church like... A religious church but when i go into a dive bar and especially if i'm alone i'm going to a, a reflective a period yeah. of time you know a silent and if it's activity if it's a place that, that has that not only the ambiance and and relatively quiet the music doesn't have to be real loud mm -hmm. good but not necessarily loud but the bar staff the bartenders and whatnot they're just like a, a pastor or a preacher mm -hmm. at a church they take care of you yeah and there's yeah. a, there's a difference between hospitality and like an award winning bartender. You know what I mean? Like, I would much rather have uh, you know a, a sweet old lady. Hey, hey you all right, hun? And pour me yeah, a shot sure. and give me a, give me a little basket of popcorn and take care of me than some you know have the best tasting old fashioned I ever had and yeah. some asshole hipster bartender. Um, I, you know you don't go you don't go to dive bars to have right. Uh, yeah. You know, um, have you ever used a bartender as 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 that person, you know. Oh yeah. As the well, as, of course. as as your as your rabbi, your priest, whatever the have you ever sat across with. Has anybody ever engaged you and you dive talked? dive bars that I've been that I frequented, um, that I you know I became a regular mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, you get to know everybody that works there, the owners. So they they come in and say, "Hey, Rick, how you doing?" And you yeah. go, oh, "Man, I had a shitty day." And they go, "What's wrong?" And then you start talking. Exactly. So, so do you engage? Have you engaged they, in long conversations? It was it was therapy that that I paid for with. You know, buying drinks, right? Sure, right, right. Versus paying somebody, and I go sit on a couch and say, "Well, you know, uh -huh. that kind of a thing." Not that I'm making fun of people that do that. That's just not me. Yeah. You think yeah. the pace of a dive bar allows that with a bartender to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction and and developing that that relationship? A true dive bar, yeah, because yeah. It, a true dive bar never really gets super busy, right? Yeah, because it's just not a real popular place to go. It's not hip enough. It's not the music isn't current. Whatever, the case may be. But they, but they stay. But and they and they have to open early. Oh God, yeah. Mm -hmm. They have to open in the morning, and they have to close. Got to handle those third shifters whenever they, <laughs> whenever they freaking close. Yeah. Um, What's the place? Betty's when downtown. Oh, I can they, tell you what. Well, yeah. Betty's used to do that. Betty's is I can't remember what their hours are, but the Ruckmore. Uh, you've been to the Ruckmore, haven't you? No, I haven't. Oh my God. No, you can just call me Rick. <laughs> You've never been to the Ruckmore. Let's go. No. Straight up on 23. No, no because you said you, you wanted to go to Bossy Girls. Yes, and I And I'm joined with me, yeah, yeah, which you... is my favorite little dive bar. And, right. And I, I you know, have a, have a business relationship with and personal friendship with the owners, too. Um, I'd love to take you there because it is a little hole in the wall. It's a little narrow. Which, which no. one is it? Bossy, Bossy Girls. Girls. I haven't been there yet. Bossy Girls, but I'm joined. Oh, Do you go. like burlesque there, Greg? Oh, heck yeah. Who doesn't? Uh, every Monday night. Oh, shit. And a lot of times on Friday nights. <laughs> Monday night's the actual show. Friday's just an accident. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sex kitten burlesque. Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, you know, actually, crew. now that, that is 
uh, ringing a bell, bell, I think, of... Uh, well, Greg's going to have to go with us. All right. All right. That's fine. So, well, there's no burlesque at the, at the Ruck War at, at all, but it is... I mean, I can take my shirt off and dance on the table, but nobody no. wants to see that. Nobody wants do to see it, that. Do it, do it, do it. I would no, love that. No, no, I would Subscribe not. Subscribe at YouTube not, with Whiskey Biscuit. No, I'd, no be, I'd be wrapping things up. <laughs> Our guest has been 20 <laughs> years ago. 20 years ago, I might have done that, but not, not now. I'd be wrapping not this, this podcast up. But no, but the Ruck is one of those places that opens up like at six o'clock in the morning. That's wow. perfect. <laughs> when do they what? sleep? When do they sleep? <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, there's some people. Obviously, everybody does has a different shift. But yeah, they open up at like six, yeah. six o'clock, seven was, o'clock that, in the morning. Yeah, that was the passage uh, of uh, at, at Dayton at college. There's a bar that uh, you, you know opening the hills. I think it was called the Hills, but yeah, that was the thing. It was it was it opened at six. Is I've that been right? In the fucking yeah. bar. Yeah. So that was the thing. If you, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. if you could stay out all night and then make it to five or six a.m. or whatever it was, you could open Hills. You have a drink, you know, and then you go past over out. over on your side of town because yeah. the NCR used to yep. be there. Yeah, and that was they get off three shift, yep, third and shift that was be open all. What um, it was uh, I want to say back in ninety mid nineties for about eight months, I was I had an apartment. I was renting with a friend of mine in Jackson, Michigan, just south of Lansing. And there was a bar just down the street from us that was open 24 hours a day. I love it. Wow. I mean, we would, is... we would roll in there at like 5.36 in the morning, get a couple of drinks, and that started the day. <laughs> so they they, 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 they catered to the, like, they had the, a license to be open 24-7? Yeah. Because there was, was different, right? in that area, there were also um, industrial, not plants, but like, uh, Auto manufacturing. Right, right. They yeah, made parts. Sure. That makes sense, yeah. And they were three shifts, you know, a day. So they ran 24 hours. The bar was open 24 hours and had a kitchen that was open 24 hours. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Because yeah, I, when I was spending time in Chicago, I mean, if you timed it out right, there would be bars that would close at, you know, 4, 4.30 in the morning. There'd be bars that would open up mm-hmm. at 5 a.m. Yep. So you could just slide yeah. right yeah, out. Yeah, you have your little routine of, like, that place no. is open between this hour yeah. and, yeah. You yeah. Could go. And that's the one thing I miss about yeah. being in Germany. I was telling you that I was stationed over in Germany when I was in the Army back in the 80s. Over there, the bars in, in Frankfurt, I was stationed east of there, but the bars in Frankfurt would close. The latest one, I think, closed at 4 a.m. And the first train to get back to my base, which was an hour train ride, was not out till six, but over there all the soda machines had beer in them. Oh, oh. <laughs> so we sat That's on awesome. the train platform waiting, you know, for two hours waiting for the train. Kept drinking. That's Kept awesome. Going. God, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna call. That's it what I love line. about Europe. <laughs> oh, there's many things to love about Europe. It's a it's, yeah. I remember going to, to getting a, a Heineken at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> They had a Heineken, so every bottle, Big Mac and a Heineken. Oh, man. <laughs> you can't talk about that. barfing. Yeah. <laughs> a Royale uh, with cheese and a Heineken, please. So I wanted to ask you, Dino. <laughs> ask me. For, ask me anything you want. For a dive bar, what, what would be one or two of your favorite songs that you'd love to hear when you walk in? I... I would probably, you know, and you can do this now with the with the high tech jukeboxes. You can you can get any artist you right, want. Right. Yeah. 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 But uh, uh, when I go into a dive bar, I definitely uh, gravitate towards Rat Pack music or vocalists. You know, Sinatra, Dean Martin. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Nat, uh, I'll go Nat King Cole, Tony Bennett. Um, uh, just a lot of old '60s stuff. I want. I want. Or or, or I'll go with the music of. Uh, my youth, my teenage years, you know, some '70s stuff. Uh, I want to hear that type of music. And every once in a while, every once in a while, there might be a country song that's just ringing true with how I'm feeling at that particular point in time. And I might put on right. some George Jones oh, no. and, uh, and and go back. And, <laughs> and I might put on some Patsy Cline yeah. and, uh, and 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 just kind of morph into that and and let it just roll over me and, and feel it because yes the music that I'm listening to in a dive bar is key and essential to where my head is and where I might be emotionally at that particular time if I'm sad and contemplative I'll need that the right type of, of music if I'm feeling good you know if, I, if I'm sad and contemplative I'm, I might want to hear in, in the wee small hours of the morning right. you know right and and, I, and and sometimes I'll actually 
well up. I have, you know, and just like it, it affects me. But if I'm in a good mood and and happy, you know, I want to hear Frank singing, come fly, fly with, with me. me, let's fly, <laughs> let's fly away. Ain't or that Martin, a kick in the head. Ain't that a kick in the head, you know, I want to hear, I want to hear the ba ba da 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 you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing how, uh, well, it's not, it's not really amazing. I mean, music is, music, that's what music does. I mean, that's why, that's why, that's why soundtracks on, in, in film and, and, and so forth, you know, it, it's supposed to evoke some sort of emotion. So yeah, the that kind of music is what I'm probably looking for in a dive bar. I don't want to hear the latest song from Maroon Five, you know, when it, when, <laughs> I, when, I, when I when I go I, I, into the, into a, a dive bar. No, take you know? That's you just because it. you don't have the moves like Jagger. <laughs> no, you know? right. so. I don't, don't want to. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear something that speaks to me. Well, it, it's like when I go into a dive bar. Um, you can't go wrong with the Rat Pack, period. Right. Um, any any member of the Rat Pack. Uh, but a lot of times, I like if I'm really kind of in a dark place, um, not physically, but all oh, well, that helps. Sure. Um, pour me some more of that if you would. I certainly of. can. Um, I will. I'm getting a nice but if I'm if I'm in a dark place, uh, Leonard Cohen. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, you know, love listening to his stuff because it is so cerebral. And and it really kind of, you know, um, speaks I, I'm, to I'm me. I'm looking away from you just to see <laughs> if if it's somewhere close by. But if I'm in a uh, a good happy mood, and I'm like, even if I'm there alone, and I'm I'm just there to enjoy myself and have some drinks, George Thorogood, George one Thurgood, bourbon, one yeah. scotch, and one beer. I drink alone. I drink alone. Yeah. You know those. You can't go wrong with those either. We're not done with we're not done with Leonard Cohen, my friend. Uh, no, yeah, I'll take an ice cube as well. I'm gonna get up for a second. I'm trying to find it. It must be someplace <laughs> else in my collection. But if you, did, he's one of my favorites. I oh, love Leonard Cohen. Let, and, oh, oh my God, yeah, Leonard Cohen is is where? Uh, I know it's, I had it right here. It was a book of his poetry that I had. Always close by someplace, but apparently not right at the moment. Oh yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, right. No, I'm good. I'm missing all kind of stuff. <clears throat> You're like, I think someone's stealing my shit, Hansberry. <laughs> is, it, is it with with your DVDs that I have? Well, the DVDs and and uh, I told uh, Whitney that we're missing a whiskey business class as well. well Jamie Fit- uh, uh, San Filippo uh, probably uh, broke in. Maybe, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Leonard Cohen. I actually got to see him in concert the last time he came through town. Oh, very nice. Very and, cool. Uh, yeah. Have you ever seen him uh, in person? Never, never had Dude, the pleasure of seeing him live. I've cried twice at at, at a concert, uh, and Leonard Cohen was one of them. Wow. Um, it's just, you know, you talk about listening to not only the, the music, but the lyrics, which is why I love that book of poetry of his yeah. as well. Um yeah, I, I was I was crying. The other time was Andrea Bocelli, uh, because uh, just uh, it just you know well, his I mean, voice. I mean, come on. No, just it just it it, it affected me. Well, uh, yeah. I, I saw and that I, tour and too. And I don't know why. No, I mean, he played it, for like three hours. What's that? Yeah, I saw that tour too. He he played for like three hours. Who did? Leonard Cohen. Oh yeah, it was a great show. Yeah, it was a great show. But yeah, that's a great one yeah. to say that that speaks to you, and and yeah. Well, I mean, it really. It's that dark, dark, oh, gravelly voice. That, that's, it, it's a smoky that's dive smoky. bar voice. Yeah. Smoky I mean, dive that bar is. voice. I expect, you know, if there's like an old geezer that's like 150 years old behind the bar, tending bar, that's what I expect their voice to sound like when I talk to them. Sure. And if it isn't, I'm disappointed. Yeah. What are you having, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> that would scare me. I'll, I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> No, actually, I won't see you later, but I'm leaving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, it's, Leonard Cohen was just, I don't even know how I got into him. Me either. At, at a young age, but I think I discovered him on my own. I had a it was an wide variety of music growing up as a kid. Um, my mother was more the folk. Joan Baez, John Sebastian, Love and Spoonful, Joni Mitchell kind of stuff. Um, my father, on the other hand, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Buffalo, Springfield, Deep Purple as we got into yeah, the 70s. It's all good music. Right um, Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. I mean, my A-C-D-C. father was at Woodstock. So, 
hey, ACDC with Bon Scott. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Not that I don't like Brian Johnson. Up there. But, but <laughs> Bon Scott, he had, he had to go on. Mm-hmm. And how does your wife drink? Not like I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Cause uh, I'm always, I'm no. always curious about, I know you're married because yeah. because we we uh, we we talked about yeah, I didn't that. Le- didn't learn my lesson the first time. <laughs> no, so, so, second marriage. Second me. marriage. Yes. Okay. Second, second marriage for both of us actually. So. Okay. So I'm always interested when somebody who has an appreciation for for booze and cigarettes and music and dive bars like that. I always wonder. I'm always curious about their significant other if if there's a match there. I mean, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. Mm-hmm. We're. Um, my wife Valerie, uh, her and I are an online success story. Oh, oh go on. We met online in 2003, <clears throat> and I have no clue why I I was living in New York at the time. Decided to look in Ohio. I mean, Ohio is one of those states I never really thought about. It was like, okay, I'm driving through Ohio to get to Chicago, or sure. right, 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 or you know, it was it was you know, flyover state. As, as it's always been called. Um, but I happened to go on, and it was one of those free weekends that the paid sites, you know, dating sites do. And we both were on. I sent her a message, and Boom. we connected. Nice. And what were your mutual interests? <laughs> she was a biker. Um, Are you a biker? I was. You was. I was. You was a biker. I was a biker. Um, I don't don't have a bike any, any longer, but huh. I... At, at this point, it's my hands. I've got uh, carpal tunnel. No, it's arthritis. osteoarthritis. Oh, welcome to the club. And yeah, in, in both hands, um, and some issues with my with my ankles. You know, mm-hmm. old age it sucks. You can do the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the where your wife's driving and you're in the back holding onto her. Well, yeah, you funny story, Greg. Right? Funny, <laughs> funny you mentioned this. When I first, this is you're, you're gonna love this, do you know? I'm trying. Um, to, I'm just trying to picture it. <laughs> we we met in 2003 online. Um, started you know calling each other back and forth from New York to Ohio for a couple of months. Right. And then I still remember our first date. Um, I hope I, I drove. Well, <laughs> I can't remember her birthday to save my life. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember my wife's birthday. You know, Seriously, um, I can't. Well, I've got it down to one or two days. Yeah, no, I can never remember. I know your wife's birthday. Don't yeah, worry about it. I'll, 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 I'll remind you. Uh, so what do you want to do on your birthday? My other yeah, shirt's yeah. at your mom's house, right? Oh. <laughs> um, oh. But no, we uh, we met in, in the like late summer, early fall of, of 2003 and talking back and forth. And she invited me out for a weekend. Nice. Come out to Ohio, you know, meet in person. And like I said, she's a biker. Um, but our, our first date was December thir- 13th of 2003, I believe, at Nationwide Arena. I drove out overnight Thursday night into that Friday morning, got to her place at like 6.30 in the morning, and took a nap. And then, you know, we went, did whatever, she showed me around Columbus and went to a concert. So our first date was a Bette Midler concert. Oh, my <laughs> God. And it floored me. I mean, Bette Midler's just a fantastic performer. Sure. Yeah. Um, and she does her homework. If you've never seen her live. I've never seen her live. What, what do you mean by now, that? Okay, now, you got to remember, this is my first time, like, actually being in Columbus. Sure, sure. Versus traveling through it. Okay. And Bette Midler's up there making jokes about people that live in New Albany. Oh. Okay. So my wife's there. laughing her ass off. You know, at, at the time, we weren't married. But as I... After I moved out here in March of 2004, within six months, I knew what New Albany was all about. Six months later, you started laughing. Oh, God. Yeah. I was like, I get, now what, I get it. I get what she was, now what she I was get doing. It. And she was just like <laughs> slamming these people from New Albany. And just, it was, but it was a great first date. And like I said, cool. she was a biker. And after I moved out here and... and when you uh, say she was a biker. Motorcycle. Motorcycle. She was a, a biking enthusiast oh, her, or was she in a oh. gang? <laughs> well let me put it this way um when i when i when i first moved out here uh, the bar that she always went to was called booze's bar yeah okay. oh, boy. it was a harley davidson biker sure. bar not like gang right no, but club no. bar which is harley harley, harley, harley enthusiasts yes. 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 right 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 more than just enthusiasts. Oh, you know the, I mean, these so, were yeah. people that lived 
sure. Harley. Um, but it was it, it was a great bar, not a dive bar, but great you know great ambiance to it. Isn't that funny? A, but you would think you you would just and and then it's wrong to say that. But you would think a biker bar would be a dive bar. You would think. You would think. Yeah. Stereotype, but you, you yeah, know. when you start stereotyping, right? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but we. Uh, <laughs> First few months after I moved down here, you need a jacket. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you need, you need a, you need we a go jacket. out to the bar instead she, of a blazer. They yeah, got leather yeah. jackets at the door. She's introducing me to her friends that are all bikers guys, and it's not like you know, hey, this is Bob and Steve and Larry. No, this is Gearhead, Sprocket, Clutch. <laughs> Those were their names. <laughs> And to this day, I don't know what their real names are. <laughs> and I've been out here for 17 friggin' years. <laughs> you know. Clutch. But, but she she really kind of, um, I mean, she invited me to move out to Ohio. She knew I was ready for a change, getting out of New York. I'd been divorced for a few years at that point and needed a change of scenery, needed sure. to get out of New York. So she invited me out and, hey, move in. So I was like, okay, cool. We just had, we just got along. The chemistry was great right from the beginning. Um, but the first few times we went to boozes, there was, you know, for some reason, women seem to just want to hit on me when I'm new Uh-oh. into a bar. Oh, nice. I feel All bad my wife did was walk, well, you. at the time, my girlfriend, my wife now, oh, <laughs> she, she would just walk over to him and say, um, yeah, he's mine. Yeah. And you look at her, and she's not one that, you're going to trifle with. <laughs> so it was a fist of cups in the first couple of years? No, no. She never had to throw punches. Oh, nice. Okay. But she had, a, she had a reputation there. You just didn't screw with her. Yeah. yeah. At all. You I mean, ever see her, have you ever seen your wife fight? No. Ever seen a girl fight? No. Never been seen? I don't ever. Well, I've seen, I've seen women fight, but yeah. I've, I've never seen my wife fight. It's vicious. I, oh. I don't ever want to piss my wife off <laughs> enough that she wants to hit me. Yeah, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, but no, it was, the great thing was, was going on poker runs. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of those were two dive bars, right? You know, little little dive bars on the poker run. And it was the first year, 2004, after I moved out here. Didn't have a bike out here. She had a trike, the old style Volkswagen bug mm-hmm. engine, big wide tires in the back, oh. big long sloping like chopper forks in the front. That oh. sounds awesome. Oh my god, the thing was <laughs> the thing was like freaking 20 feet long. It was huge. Oh I rode bitch. <laughs> I had no problem with that. Uh, my wife deal. loves it when I tell this story. Uh, because down. the first poker run, I still remember the bitch. first poker run we went on, I believe it was called Spirit to the Wind. Uh, all the guys at every stop were busting my balls. Because you're Oh, riding. he's riding bitch. I can't even ride a bike. Man. Finally, about the third stop, I'm still sitting behind her. But we just pulled in. The guy's laying into me again i just reached around her grabbed onto her breast and said you guys hold on to the handlebars this is what i'm holding on to <laughs> shut them right up and after that all the women bikers yeah came over it's so nice to see a guy riding bitch <laughs> no problem i like the fact that they all still <laughs> keep referring to it as bitch it's That's so nice good. to see a guy riding in the position that you're in, no, riding bitch, riding yeah, bitch. Exactly right. Even when the women refer to it as that. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. And the great thing is, when you're on a trike, especially a trike right. that big with a wheelbase that wide, um, and that long, as the passenger, you don't have to kind of lean with the, right, the driver right, or the yeah. rider like you would on a two wheel bike. Right. So I, you just I was pretty out, hammered by, yeah. The, yeah. by the yeah. end of that first poker run. Must you know? be a comfy ride. Just I like, couldn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all, because I was feeling no pain by the second That's stop. That's nice. You know. I I got to be honest with you. I, I don't think I'd have a problem riding yeah. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I like riding passenger, yeah. Yeah. Dude, That's I just it. like screwing yeah. with people. You know, it's like, throw it at me. I've got broad shoulders. Ever been in any fights in the dive bar? Me? You. Yeah, oh, you hell did. yeah. Yeah. Had my clock cleaned. Yep. And vice versa? Cleaned a few clocks yourself? The last actual fight, Fistica fight that I was in, I want to say it was 1991. It's been a while then. I've had fights since then. I scared myself. <laughs> I'm always amazed. Like, I talk to these two guys every once in a while. You know, I'm always amazed. The Maybe amazed is too strong of a word. But the, 
I'm always amazed when I come across people that have never been in a fist fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Well, you, know, you, haven't, you haven't fight, lived until you've had your ass kicked. It's been 45 yeah. years. But yeah. yeah. It was middle school, but it counts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the dive bar where no, I No, it doesn't count? Come on. Where I had my ass kicked was a, a dive bar fight that I don't remember getting into because I was blackout drunk and <laughs> woke up in the hospital mm-hmm. with orderlies on either side of me holding my arms down Uh-oh. as the doctor put his one hand on my forehead, said, this is going to hurt, took his other hand and rebroke my nose to reset it. Oh, yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I was I was messed up. And ever since then, my sinuses have been just... Just a mess. A mess. And that was in 1987. <laughs> wow. When that happened, so yeah, i I think I've I think I've managed to get in a fight, a good fist fight, every decade, at least one or two since the since the seventies. Nice job. I think I, I think yeah. I've, I think I've managed to. Uh, well, you don't want to break the streak. Yeah, yeah. You know. and, and I don't start them. You do. So in the next, in the Let's last go. ten years, have you been in a fist fight? Yep. Shit, dude. Yep. I've tried to hey, avoid see, that. I'll shit. bet you Dino's one of those kind of guys that because that's it's kind of like the the I don't want to say the hipster thing, but a younger generation they fight fair. No, there is no fair. No, you fight to win. Mm-hmm. Pulling hair, punch him in the you know the salad, whatever, whatever you got to do. In fact, I still, I I still. Um, Size things up when I go into a a, a dive bar. I kind of look around to see. Oh, you have to, to just in to, case, to, just to be a couple yeah. steps ahead. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, when I see somebody really loud and really drunk and really obnoxious, and you know, I don't know if they're gonna look my way if I look at them the wrong way or vice versa right. or something happens. I you know, I always kind of what, like because what's on their mind? Why are they what, in there? Why, 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 why yeah. are they there? I'm yeah. always I'm always kind of like one step ahead. Like okay, if it does escalate into something like this, what am I going to do? And I'm looking around at everything around me. In respect to the fair fight, not fair. I'm looking because <laughs> I'm looking to <laughs> just whatever uh, I can use to win. Right, yeah. Yeah, whatever, get the edge. But I check check it out. But uh, nothing in the last nothing in the last. Uh, Five years. That's I don't what I'm saying think. you're due. Yeah, let's go looking for trouble. That's right. No, I, I never. No, I never look for trouble. See, I that's never, the, that's the thing, Greg. I've never started them. I've never don't started start a fight, them. but be ready to finish it. Yeah. yeah, good call. And I've also come to the defense of others. Sure, so that's been some of them as well. Oh, okay. You know, matter of fact, the last fight that I was in in '91 was coming to the defense of a woman. Not that she needed defending, but when a guy's hitting her, yeah, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. there's a problem. That there, I draw the sure. line. That that's just. There is no call for that, period. No. Unless it's Ronda Rousey, and then you just kind of walk <laughs> sit back and watch. <laughs> yeah. Ronda fight, Rousey. Fight, 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 fight. It's Ronda. I'll, I'll sit there and say, here, I'll hold your beer. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> She's like, I got this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's There's all kind of things that can happen in, in a dive bar. But most of my experiences, even the sad ones, I mean, you know, uh, I, I, I've left them satisfied yeah you know mission accomplished whether it was social with friends or contemplative on my own um let me ask you a couple other fun little questions before as we start to wind up here (laughs) um you've never been to the ruckmore so i don't even know how you're going to answer this question and it might and it might just be what you mentioned earlier but i was going to tell you what do you think the best dive bar is is in columbus and if it's the one you just mentioned, that's well, fine. Well, I mean, Bossy Girls is—it's a place I've been, um, that that I really do, I really do love it, just because it is so small, and you're never going to get a big crowd in there. I've never been in the place when it's packed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I know that uh, Dick's Den is is considered a dive bar here. Mm-hmm. To me, it's it is a little bit too trendy at times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, when I've been in there for a couple of different shows and whatnot. Um, local bands playing uh, a little bit too trendy for me. Yeah, too hip. Yeah, no, no that was I am that not was cool. One of the first uh, <laughs> when I moved here, my my older cousin was like, "We got to go take you know to this yeah. hip spot." No, it's not true. You you are cool. You're just you're, you're not self aware cool. Mm-hmm. Which I'm the quiet cool. You're yeah. You're, you're not self aware. You're not you're not self indulgent cool. You're not obvious cool. So that kind of makes you cool in your own way. 
Well, thank you. You don't try to be no. cool. No, it's, it's God, simply no. by not trying to. He's be got cool. pin-up tattoo, pin-up girls uh, tattoos, yeah. dude. You're yeah, fucking cool, man. That's good yeah. stuff. Uh, Highback Tavern on I South bet, High. Tavern. Oh yeah, that's a good place. Um, I mean, uh, and that's that's got the old wooden bar and mm-hmm. just wood ambiance. Um, I wish Mike's in the short north. I don't get up to the short north a whole lot just to hang out. But like in all those hip, trendy places, there's still that one little bar, that one little hole yeah. in the wall that refuses to give up their Hold lease on. or whatever the case might right. be. And that would be, I think that's Mike's in the short north. And I Don't go take, changing. I'm you know. take you to the Rockmore, for sure. Oh, definitely got to go to the Rockmore. I go there. Uh, Rafters up on close to me is, is, is a good dive bar. The Blue Danube was oh. one of my favorite places. I of, heard it was all, a all all good place. And that, I remember the Blue Danube when they had... Uh, the jukebox that I speak of. And not only that, they used to have individual little towers oh. at each table to mm. go and yep. flick through. Like Johnny Rock. The old a yeah, w restaurant, Ruby restaurants, yes. used to have those. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blue Danny, I mean, I mean, I, what's the word on that? I thought, are they rebuilding that there area was, and there trying was to... The, there was a... Yeah. Um, there was, was a buyer for a minute, wasn't there? Was there? A time there where they... Just a hot minute. Yeah. Where they were, they were going to completely... Redo it and retro it up. I mean, they we're going to try to keep the the theme and the vibe of, of what it was when it first opened up, back in the late '40s or, or '50s. Uh, and I don't I don't know what's what's happened to it since then. As long as the fried cauliflower was going to still be there, I'm good. The fried, yeah, right. The fried, <laughs> the fried cauliflower. Mushroom. Yeah, they, they had a great they had a great menu and good great cheeseburgers. Mm-hmm. I miss this is that like place. a discussion I've place. had with with um, older musicians here locally. Um, since launching the website over the last four or five years or so. I mean, the ones that were around and playing when Bernie's and Stashes were open. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, I remember those places. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to Ohio State in uh, 1977. Never got to experience those yeah. uh, to for myself. You would have loved those places. You would have yeah. loved them. You know, you which, is, loved them. which is ironic because I, I really wish that I had been able to, to go there and, and see a concert and whatnot. And... My friends that know I'm from New York, they're like, oh, man, I wish I could have gone to CBGB's, which is where I used to go all the time. Right. And I'm like, you guys had your own version of CBGB's here. And it was Bernie's and Stashes. Yeah. We you did. Know? We did. I mean, CBGB's was a shithole. But right. it was our shithole. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Nirvana played at Stashes, well, right? Yeah. Or, well, I mean, yeah. Al Rosa has been in the news. You know, they sold that that off. We've that's low-income housing now. That's yeah. turning into housing. Yeah, we've yeah, talked about that before in this episode. Um, Northburg. Huh. I used to go to the Northburg. That was kind of divey. Uh, the first dive bar I went into was in Steubenville. It was the Spot Bar in Steubenville, Ohio, and that's probably you know one that I still hearken back to and and remember it and love, and is still open today as we speak. Had all the elements that we've discussed here. Uh, what's your all-time favorite dive bar? Siberia Bar. Siberia Bar. Where's that at? Where else but Hell's Kitchen section of New York City? And what made it so special? All the things everything we've discussed? we everything we've discussed, and the fact that it's Hell's Kitchen. I mean, Hell's Kitchen they've they for thirty years, thirty forty years now they've been trying to clean up New York. Mm-hmm. There's certain parts of New York ain't never going to get clean, man. And Hell's Kitchen <laughs> being one of them. Yeah, parts of it anyway. Part of it anyway. But it's just one of those places. It's it's. The old school New York. Sure. You know, I mean, I can remember when Times Square had sex shops and it was, you know, seedy and I loved going there. Yeah, right, you know? right, right, right. Both you hands know? on the magazines, gentlemen. <laughs> it, was, it was one of those, it was, it was, it was a time before they, you know, before they yeah, Disney-fied. Now, I was going to yeah. say there's Disney yeah. Yeah. You know. Right, right. I remember there used to be a sex shop right here. Now it's an Applebee's. That's, a, that's pretty much Times Square. Yeah. 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 yeah you know, it was, it was a time where Going through the city, walking through the city, riding the subway, you were tense. There was a tension just always there. But being a New Yorker, you you recognized it. You just didn't think about it. Right. You know, I had friends that were like, oh, my God, got to lock the doors. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to ride the subway after dark. And it's, why? You want to pay for a taxi? Go ahead. No, yeah, you know them. Then be aware of it. Yeah, you are. Don't be an idiot. Trust me, man. You walk around. You walk. You walk with fear. People can smell it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, it's like I I, I liken it this way because I've had people out here in Ohio um, that still to this day say the same thing that I walk into a place like I own the place. Mm -hmm. I walk down the street like I own the street. Yeah. 
not that I think I do. It's just a competence. That's just a sure. key word right there. You know, I, I walk across a crosswalk, you know, the cars, cars are going to stop or I'll jump on the hood. <laughs> you walk with confidence. You yeah. walk with confidence. You walk with a certain gait. You can get into just about any place you really want to. If, so, if whoever's looking at you when you're walking, try this next yeah. time. Try this next time you're at a hospital where it says, that, you know, uh, only authorized personnel. Just walk, walk in, walk in like you belong there and nobody will say a word to you. Yeah, that's a true. hospital, huh? I mean, just an example. <laughs> an example. It's like, I got samples. I got to get in there. Yeah, yeah. It's just like a dog can They've smell fear on you. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. It's the same thing when you're around people in, in exactly. businesses or on the street or whatever. It, it's just, I call it an air of confidence. I'm confident in myself. And I really don't care what people think about me. Yeah. I never really have. And that's very liberating. We're all cinematic fans here. John and I make films. Hansberry loves films. Uh, we keep saying he's going to be in one of our films, but, you know, it's one of these days. He's going to be in the next one. <laughs> Best dive bar in a movie. Mm. Oh, shit. Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse? That's a good one. Barfly. I, I don't, Barfly is the one with Mickey Rourke that I thought of. Barfly. Yeah, Barfly. Barfly, I think, would be... Barfly would be it, right? Yeah. I mean, every great dive bar... Has barflies. It has barflies in it. Yeah, you know. I mean, it's it's it, a dive bar is someplace where you get served and you get served. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, a true dive bar. Or now that I think about it, uh, the Departed has the best dive bars. Mm. The dive bar is good one in the Departed uh, too. But as yeah. far as far as the bar almost being the actual character, character of it, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, almost almost one of the characters in the film, Barfly, is the one that, that comes to mind. The most to me. I mean, you 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 felt it. I mean, you you were there, and uh, it's always amazing to me when you see a, a a movie with some that's that's just full of so much wretched sadness and oh. like Barfly <laughs> and leaving Las Vegas. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm always amazed where I, where I watch those movies and you just see the the results of of, <laughs> of alcoholism and yeah. drinking and so forth. And as soon as you leave out of there. Jesus Christ! I want I want a drink. I, you, would think, you would think you would think, I, you would think oh, it would do the opposite. Said, first, life's not that bad. Yeah. First time I watched <laughs> Leaving Las Vegas, I left out of the movie thinking, "Challenge accepted." Man. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> Come let's on. go. I was, <laughs> or the other way around. Like, man, I thought I was bad, but mm -hmm. I'm not that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! And uh, um, I've been uh, kind of following some of your your stuff. Uh, online as well and uh i wrote down uh -oh. something you tweeted from uh, <laughs> that you shared from tom waits and i think we'll close on this ain't no devil there's just god when he's drunk that's pretty that's, cool that's uh, yeah tom waits yeah, it's tom waits it's tom waits but i mean tom waits is another Great one to listen to. to listen to in a dive bar. Yeah, Night I mean, Hawks the piano's the been drinking. Come on, Night Hawks at the diner. My favorite Christmas song of all time: Christmas card from a hooker in Minneapolis. I mean, come on, <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That you is my favorite that. Christmas song. Yeah, yeah. I don't recall those us playing it on Sunday yeah, Ninety Five. No, yeah, what's it? Turn, turn, Sunday Ninety Five wasn't really melancholy. Yes. Yeah. More lurch, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no devil. There's just God when he's drunk, which is uh, it's comforting. It is. It is comforting. <laughs> Actually, it's because there have been times where I've been yeah. in that in that bar and I've talked to him. I'm like, you know, man, you know, I I think you're listening, but you know, I don't really think you're paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> there's a difference. Well, I've always been convinced that whether I go to heaven or go to hell, if I go to heaven, I'm going to be a bartender. But go to hell, I'm going to be a tour guide. So, <laughs> either way, you're working. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. Our guest bottle, which we practically drained, and we will uh, before this is all said and done, has been uh, in honor of our guest, who's a scotch drinker, a little Ballantine's finest. Oh, man, it was fine. Good. I haven't had Ballantine's, honestly, in 25 years. And didn't it start to go down a little smoother it's as really you good. started it's drinking it's it? 80 proof. Yeah. It's and when you pour it, it's it's really light. You know, a lot lighter than... It is um, lighter. It's 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 a little bit lighter than... It, well, this thing is is got like... It's a blend. It's a blended scotch whiskey of about uh, 50 different whiskeys. 
and like four 50? grand. Fifty? Fifty different whiskeys that are brought so into It's like a uh, infinity, infinity bottle. bottle. Yeah. yeah. It's about it's a blend of fifty different whiskeys and about and four That's why it's free. It's just leftovers. Um, and, All uh, the bartenders just take shots from the bar and pour it in. A big I know that you said you like you like a more mossy peaty scotch and and this is not this is no this, this is, is not peaty this at is all. not peaty at all it's got a little peat but very 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 little and an actual pretty sweet finish once you start mm-hmm. uh no sucking, very much so sucking down a, a few stuff. of them you want so, the peaty stuff you got to go to isla bislay yeah so you do so the, the, the valentine's has been our our 165th bottle our guest putting the eye in dive bar rick gethin the Cat Club podcast, which you uh, can get exclusively at, say it again, Music Motion. Music in Motion, Columbus.com. Music in Motion, Columbus.com. All one word. All one word. At Music in Motion. No, Music Motion. Music in Motion. Music in Motion. Columbus. <laughs> Columbus.com. <laughs> well, Hansbury. Will, I'll, I'll put a link in the uh, yeah, show we'll, notes we'll, there. Just type a link we'll in the dragon. W- we'll w- 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 <laughs> w- w- <laughs> dot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we forgot to, to, to mention, speaking of, of plugs and whatnot, we forgot to mention that in the weeks to come that we will be part of the Evergreen Podcast Woo-hoo. Network. We've only got a couple more steps to do. We had to take pictures uh, yeah. for, for the Evergreen Podcast, and that was... Uh, right here. Should I... Should I uh, that was a fun night. They was, uh, we actually we wanted nudes, huh? The, 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 yeah, right? Yeah. Here's one. Here's, Here's one picture we're showing right now on YouTube. <laughs> Which one are you showing? The, the, my, uh, the you know. John's uh, headshot. No, yeah. John's headshot? That's yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 Did yeah. you pick one? <laughs> <laughs> the Stan Am Laurel. I doing a monkey or my Stan, Stan Laurel? Laurel. Stan what do you think of that one, Rick? <laughs> Look at that guy. I wore my ruffled tuxedo. That is Swave and DeBonner. Right there, uh, right huh? there. That's uh, the, that. Oh, that's not the, my favorite Hansberry tuxedo shot. Well, I got to save something for the web. Website, something, right. but we had to take. We're Get, getting, we're getting people close. guessing, right? Yeah, we're, exactly. we're getting close, so we're excited to to be joining uh, the Evergreen Podcast Network. In the Congratulations, weeks to come. thank you, man. It's it's uh, it's 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 nice. It's nice. It's but good. It, it, but you can still find everything at whiskeybusinesspod.com. Absolutely, all yeah. of our archive all the episodes, out there. all your favorite podcasting apps. Uh, we've got us. So subscribe, rate, review us, please, and thanks. That helps, uh, like boost our uh, uh, awareness. I guess mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, but word of mouth um, is, is humongous. So, uh, you know, uh, sh- share, go through, and, and, and uh, share with either your whiskey loving friends or your, uh, you know, if maybe we have a comedian on, maybe share with a guy who likes comedy. That's the thing about whiskey business. We have everybody on from A to Z. Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, and then you have me. And then, and then we yeah. got Rick. We got you. Uh, a, I don't uh, know where you fit in. Yeah. Scraping the bottom of the barrel. No, man. It's uh, it's <laughs> it's kindred spirits is what this is. This is which, uh, like I said, Cheers to that, my the, man. What, what, what we do here, as we, we say it all the, time, all the time, all we look for is a, a good pour and a good conversation. And this has been a great conversation. This was great. I, I was going to make that comment after the show, but I'll say it now. Uh, this is, I think, like the quickest easiest pot like we're just bullshitting you know normally it's like oh what what's the question yeah, we're gonna ask fun. what are we gonna get to and we just were chatting man it's fun. It's very the fun. way to go yeah man. yeah very Slow. cool i do it every week <laughs> it helps it yeah, helps and you do you should listen to to uh cat club podcast uh you can start with my episode yeah <laughs> Out, no, well, the great thing about the cat club podcast is i don't like tag genres of music for the bands that are on there i might reference if they're maybe a rock band or something but i don't really reference what kind of band they are so if you don't know them you won't know their music you won't know what the style is but it's the joy of discovery and you'd be amazed at how many friends that, that I, I told about that 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 asked me with a question mark did you pick those bands because they had no idea that you know I like Watershed or Royal Crescent Mob or Devo. Because because what is, explain it to everybody? You pick uh, you have a guest on and you pick five uh, four, four artists. Uh, I, I mean normally normally it's it's a band or an artist. Okay. Um, and we're gonna play their music, obviously when when they come on the show. And if it's uh, like new music, if they've got a new album coming out, or well, maybe we had the pleasure and the honor of like exclusively premiering brand new music from local bands. Chuck First time you hear you hear it on our show. Yeah, um, but for a guest like Dino, when you came on the show, uh, you know, with him, I I, I knew I was going to have a good time with him because, you know, I've done my re- research, done my homework with you, Dino. I knew you were in radio and comedy, and you know, we're closer oh, in age oh. than I am to a lot of bands, so I knew we'd have a lot to talk about. 
And I was like, well, pick four songs because we play four songs in every show. Pick four bands, four songs, whatever. And we'll go from there. Yeah, cool. And I picked four. At first you picked I, the bands. I picked I, the songs. You picked the songs. And, and I swear to God, I still <laughs> hold true to this. There was an, uh, uh, an uncanny theme that ran through. I would love to take credit for that, but I can't. That that ran through. It, 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 it was it was it was serendipity, like, man. It was serendipity, but they all seem to go together, man. Like like what I've been thinking and feeling through this whole pandemic thing, you know, bleeding on the blank page and and uh, what was the Royal Crescent Mob one? The, 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 I can't remember off the top of my no, head. No, no, leave it, leave it. Tease it, tease it. Go listen to the show. Yeah, go listen to the show. Go, 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 go listen to the show. Go listen to the show. But they all just thematically. Yeah. Sh- Strung together. Cool. Well, as Arch Madness said when I was on Vinyl Analysis, I don't know what three years ago or it whatever was a while it was ago. Yeah, you know, and such to me it was an honor hearing this, hearing him say this, that I had my finger on the pulse yeah. of the Columbus. Yeah, music you scene. do. Yeah, you, you do, do man. Um, and, and you, you were a writer for the Blue Jackets, right? Is that the, I covered the Columbus yeah, Blue yeah. Jackets for almost ten years. Yeah, that's so cool. As a, as we didn't a, even get into that part of it. No, because well, next time, yeah. You know, this was, this, was this is going to be a mutual thing. We're going to keep going back and forth on each other's Why shows. Not? Why the you know? hell not? Yeah, well, well, the, 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 going to be a two. regular part two with Rick yeah, Ethel. We'll two. get into we'll get into some more rabbit holes before. So, you know, my takeaway from all this, as we say goodnight, is that you got no problem riding, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> At least I know where to put my hands. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn fight words. Uh, whiskey business, <laughs> my friends, is a never the luck production <clears throat> produced magnificently <laughs> by Greg Hansberry on the audio side and John Whitney on the video side. And uh, I am your host who can't do the show without either of these two. My name is Dino Tripotis. Our guest has been Rick Gethin. Until the next bottle, see ya. <laughs>